and help us sing. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you for living. God, we thank you for living. In the name of Jesus, we know you live because you live within our hearts. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. God, we give you honor. In the name of Jesus, forgive every sin, God. In the name of Jesus, touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus, let your blood cover now from the crown of our heads to the very soles of our feet. God, you be glorified in this place. In the name of Jesus, God, you've been good. God, you've been good. God, you've been good. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. God, we thank you for your strength. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your joy. God, we thank you. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of the praise. And we came to bless you. We came to magnify you. We came to lift you up. We came to lift you up. You're worthy of the praise. You'll be glorified in this place. God, you'll be glorified. In the name of Jesus, destroy every yoke. In the name of Jesus, destroy every yoke. In the name of Jesus, let your people leave another way. Let your people leave healed. Let your people leave delivered. Let your people leave set free. In the name of Jesus, bless Bishop Hawkins. In the name of Jesus, First Lady Hawkins. In the name of Jesus, bless the Hawkins family. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you in advance for what you're gonna do. We thank you in advance for what you're gonna do. We thank you in advance for what you're gonna do. Work up our shame in the In the name of Jesus, come in this place. In the name of Jesus, go down every aisle. In the name of Jesus, go down every aisle. Saturate this place with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We glorify you. We bless your name. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. This Sunday morning scripture will be read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing the word of god for the people of god thanks be unto god
God's grace. Does anybody know anything about God's grace? Amen. His unmerited favor, his love, his mercy. Hallelujah. 
It's loving kindness toward mankind. <laughs> because of God's grace and mercy, we are not consumed. We're still here this morning. The activities of our limbs, we're able to clothe ourselves. We can walk, we can see, we can feed ourselves. Hallelujah. I'm going to go on and say that he, hallelujah, put clothes on our back. Shoes on our feet, money in our pockets, hallelujah, a roof over our heads. Some of us got nice cars, some, you know, but we still got cars, hallelujah. God is so merciful, and you know how I know, because he saved a wretch like me, hallelujah. I'm still here, and it's only because of God's grace, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storms? How did I make it through the rain? Thank you, Lord. If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. I made it this far. I made it this far. Mm, by the grace, the grace of God. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. His amazing. You brought me through the night. Oh, Lord, you kept me and you never left me. You stood by my side. There were so many times when I came so close. Oh, man, death, they tried to take me in. So the reason I'm here, it's not hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy for me to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. Church, I made. 
we are here by the grace of God. Let's praise God for his grace. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your outstretched hand. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, God, for your benefits. For you daily loadeth us with benefits. You're the God of our salvation. Strengthen us even right now. Let the glory of the Lord rest in this house. Let the presence of God be in this room. Move on us today, Lord. Strengthen those who are weak. Lift up the bowed down head. Those who need the comfort of God, stretch out your hand right now. Lord, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for the burdens that are lifted. We thank you, God, for strengthening us in those places where we are weak. God, make us to know you. Help us to have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness that we may be filled. We give you the glory this morning. Lord, anoint my tongue of thee, lips of clay, that we will speak as an oracle of thee. Grant us the tongue of the learned, that we may speak a word in season to them which are weary, and let your word find its target. God, whatever you do in this house, we dare not take your credit, but all the praise, the glory, and the honor is thine and thine alone. Now thank you for the victory, Lord, for we do have the victory on today. Victory is ours in the name of Jesus. Now come on and thank him if you know you're serving a victorious God and you know that you have the victory. Come on and give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise, worthy of the glory, and worthy of the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's thank God for our male praise team on today. Thank God for these mighty men of God and great musicians. God bless you. Thank God for you. You may be seated. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. On today, we honor the Lord for his presence and for his goodness in the life of his people. Thank God for the fragrance of this house. First Lady Catherine Crawford Hawkins, pastoral assistant elder Mark Wells, worship coordinators, elder Governor Jefferson, elder Morris Jefferson, and we thank God for all of our elders, missionaries, deacons, visitors, saints, and friends, and to our online audience. We're always glad to have you worshiping with us. Did not we have a time on yesterday? God bless all of you. Temple of Deliverance, J.O. Patterson Memorial District, we were certainly proud of you. You made us proud yesterday. You came out in great number. You were great support and uplift to our jurisdictional bishop and supervisor. They were excited to see us on yesterday. And I tell you, that brother Richard Randall and sister Tanya Price just showed out singing yesterday. And I saw so many TOD members in the choir. We would thank God for you all. It was great to be in the midst. Open your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts, the 16th chapter. Now, you all have got me up at a good time today, so I'll make sure that I get you out before high noon. <laughs> Acts, chapter 16, beginning with verse number 14. It's a lengthy reading, but you'll get the gist of it as we read. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, 
that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains were, was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Verse 25 is really where I want to take my verse of emphasis on this morning, and let me also acknowledge, thank God, Elder Maurice Wright just preached yesterday. We thank God for him representing us well. Bless you, sir. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Will you just say, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. At midnight, at midnight, they prayed. I want to talk to you from the subject, deadline at midnight. Deadline at midnight. I bless you, Usher. The book of Acts is the historical book of the New Testament. And of course, not only is it the historical book of the New Testament, it is also a book of the apostles. It's a book of two men who are highlighted. Uh, Peter is highlighted from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 12. Paul is highlighted from chapter 13 to chapter 28. So it is a historical book that highlights the apostleship, but the two main apostles, Peter and Paul, are lifted up so that you can see that God uses a variety of ministries. We see two apostles. In the text, we will see two women. Uh, we see one apostle prominent at one time, then goes off the scene. We see another apostle who is silent in the background and comes on the scene. When we actually break that down, that's really uh, symbolic of our life, that many times we are behind closed doors and we feel like we're being ignored, but when it's time, God will bring you forth. 
And then people who are always out front, and it seems like they always get all the breaks when it's time for you to come forth, they'll, God will push them back some and promote you. God has a way of always choosing his people for his times. And here in Acts, God chooses these great men. And we see not only the two apostles, but we really see a shift. Because in the shift, not only do we see the shift from Peter to Paul, but we see the shift of what God will do in a person's life. I'm here to let you know that you've got some problems, but the deadline is getting ready to come up. Uh, God is getting ready to shift you into that next realm. Uh, this is the year of victory for Temple of Deliverance members for our church, and, and, and there's a shifting in the air. And what you've been going through is going to become less and less bothersome to you. The struggles that you have had are going to decrease. But now when God blesses you, you're going to have some more struggles. But the more he blesses you, the more he will impact you to handle your blessings. God will not put you in a place that you cannot occupy properly. If he moves you to an upper level, he's going to give you the strength to stay there. Because we know where there is a new level, there is a new devil. But even though there's a new devil, it's the same God. And the same God have brought you out before, and the same God will bring you out again. How many know he'll do it? He'll do it. When we get to this 16th chapter, we see two women. Uh, we see a certain woman named Lydia. Paul is on uh, one of his missionary journeys. Uh, he is there with his companions, his preaching team, his evangelistic team. Uh, when you see Paul and us, he's talking about Silas, but he's also talking about some silent members whose names are not lifted in the text, but they're there. He's also there with uh, Timotheus or Timothy, and he's also there with Luke. So you've got the evangelistic team of Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. These two men who are out there that you can see, but the other two men are in the background. Uh, don't get upset if you're in the background. God can still use you in the background. Tell your neighbor, God can still use you in the background. There are some people who are background people. Amen. There's some people who are background people. I was just listening to Brother Andre sing and Brother Terry sing, and, and if I was on the praise team, I'd be a background singer. That, that's, that's not who I am. I'm not supposed to be out front leading the song. That's not who I am. They, they got some people that can do that better than I can. Put me in the background. And make sure that when you give me a microphone, you turn it down real low. So I won't bother anybody. God has some people with background personality, background uh, spirit, but that does not mean that because they're in the back that they got a back mind mentality. Black folks have been in the back all of our life, but that does not mean we have not achieved. Uh, we may have been to the back, but God always inched us up, always brought us forward little by little. And so just because you're in the background does not mean you're less important, less valuable. The minor prophets wrote less than the major prophets. The only difference is that the major prophets, their material was longer and much more. Isaiah's book, Jeremiah's book, uh, they, they were long books. But when you look at the Nahums and the Jonahs and, and the... Uh, uh, of other uh, Malachi's and all of those minor prophets, they were just as powerful and impactful, but they were shorter books. 
But just because they were called minor prophets, the message was not any minor. Their message was major. They just didn't write as much as the major prophets. So just because you're in the back does not mean that you've been discarded. It's just where God has you at the time. But I found out if you're faithful in the back, God can trust you to be faithful in the front. When you're faithful in the background, he'll put you to the front when it's your time. So this certain woman by the name of Lydia, she is a uh, woman of means. She's a seller of purple, which simply means that uh, Thyatira was a place where they manufactured purple dyes. And she was a seller of goods of purple dyes. She uh, did quite well. She was quite prominent in selling these dyes. And she was known in that city. But not only was she a businesswoman, the Bible says she worshiped God. So you should never let your business get you to the place that I've done all I did on my own, but I don't need God. She had a business, but she still worshiped God. If you want your business to really grow as a Christian, you better keep on worshiping God. If you want your business to take off, you better keep on putting God up front. She was a seller of purple. She worshiped God and the people heard them. And the Bible says, the Lord opened her heart. Now, you can't be a worshiper of God with a closed heart. <laughs> she worshiped God, whose heart the Lord opened. Now, I, I had to look at that for a moment. Because it's, it's veiled, but it's plain at the same time. Uh, the, the plain message is that if you worship God, something has to happen. The veiled message is that when you worship God, things will open up for you. He opened her heart. And if God opens your heart, he opens your mind. And so when he opens your mind, he shows you imagination. He gives you a shalom where you can imagine, you can see, you can dream. You're not just stuck in the past. You're not just stuck where you are. You know that God is taking you somewhere. It may be slow. You may be on the slow train. But as long as you don't pull the cord and get off, your train will take you to your destination. I'm here to let somebody know this morning, your destination is soon approaching. You're getting ready to get there. You're getting ready to get a blessing. You're getting ready to get a miracle. You're getting ready to get a breakthrough. God is getting ready to step your game up. Look at somebody tell them, it's coming. The Lord opened her heart. And she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. She went ahead and got baptized, and uh, her whole household got baptized. And then she said, if I've been faithful, stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. I want to share with you what God has given me. So when God opens your heart, he takes the stinginess away. Stay with us. Stay with us. God help the stingy folks who God is blessing every day to wake up in the morning, who God is blessing every day to have clothes in their closet, who God is blessing every day to have a vehicle and have money in their pocket. But then all of you want to do is just bless yourself. But God always blesses you with other folks in mind. When God blesses you, he wants you to reach out and touch somebody. So the, the woman of this text 
female number one. Her name is mentioned, Lydia. And, some, and so many people say because she was in Thyatira, because she was in the part of Macedonia, that it was really called the Lydian. But I won't go through that uh, theological argument at this point. The Lydia, her name is mentioned. But the next woman, female number two, her name never comes up. It just calls her a certain damsel. And then it tells you what she's about. First woman, Luke tells us that uh, she's about business. She's a seller of purple. She has a legitimate business. But the second woman, he tells her that her business was soothsaying, fortune telling. She was possessed with demons. Now the Bible did not absent itself from telling us that this woman had demons. And I believe that it's in scripture that she had demons so we would understand that God can deliver you regardless what state you're in. She's a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. And the Bible said she met us. Us again is Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. She met us. And she brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Uh, her masters had saw the gift in her, and they said, we'll profit off of her gift. And that's what people like to do. They like to profit off of your gift. And so many people now are in jail and in penitentiaries behind closed doors, and, and, and people are, are locked up and, and on probation because they profited off of the wrong gift. Uh, they did things in the wrong way. They, they, they had their smart and intelligent, but they used it in the wrong manner. And whatever gift God gives you, you got to use it to the glory of God. Because the Bible says that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And the gifts that he give us are to magnify him. See, I'm, I'm talking to a Christian church. I'm talking to believers. I, I'm not talking about those people in the world that do whatever they want to and you think like they're getting away. At the end, they're going to have to answer to God. But when you use your gift for Jesus, God will bless you going out and God will bless you coming in. When you use your gift for the Lord, watch God work in your life. If you can sing, sing to the glory of God. If you can teach, teach to the glory of God. If you can write, pen a book, so make a pamphlet. Do something, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. And when God sees you using what you have, he'll add more to it. It's no need of him giving you some more and you're not using what you got. You need to use what you got. Yeah, when you get in church, don't just use the, sit, the seat to sit in. Get up sometime and scream. Get up sometime and yell. Get up sometime and run. Use your hands to praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be. Use your mouth to speak of the goodness of the Lord, and use your feet to let the devil know this is where you belong. Use your gift for the glory of God. The Bible said that the same followed Paul and us. This same damsel, demon possessed. And that lets you know right there that if you don't stay connected to the vine, it's a whole lot of things that can possess you.
You know, I don't, I hate to say this. I look like I'm going another way today. I hate to say this. But every time we come to church, there's some possessed folks in here. But you know, this church has always, but we really do it this year, we casting demons out. We're not going to let Satan walk up in this house and take over this congregation because we are the people of God. We are bought with a price. We're going to glorify God in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits because we are the Lord. And I'm asking every member that I pastor, every person that I shepherd, I'm asking you every Sunday you come in this building, every time you enter this building, take authority over your row. Take authority over your section and say the devil won't act up on this row. The devil will not act up in this section. The devil will not act up in this house. Hallelujah. There's a deadline at midnight. This is the midnight hour for so many folks. Midnight does not have to be at 12 o'clock a.m. That's the literal midnight. But there are some other midnights. When you can't pay your bills, it's midnight. When you wake up in the morning and can't get out the bed, it's midnight. When you open your eyes but can't see nothing, it's midnight. When your kids talk back to you and you scared of your own children, it's midnight. You better tell the devil there's a deadline at midnight. Your time is up. Your time is up. The expiration date is already here. Oh, my God. I love God, but sometimes I get angry when God gets me into this realm here because the, uh, I don't want to have to talk so f aggressively and forcibly. But when God gets me here, I get righteous indignation that the saints of God, who God has been good to every day of your life, how dare you let the enemy keep you bound? We know that you're going to have some sad days and some rough days and some tough days. We know it's going to happen. It happens to all of us, but you got to put a deadline on it. Stump your feet and say, I'm putting a deadline on you, devil. Hey, hey, hey. If you're taking care of a loved one, put a deadline. My husband will be healed. My wife will be healed. My son will be saved. My daughter will be delivered. Put a deadline on the devil. It's midnight. Paul one day put his hand down in the fire. A venomous viper grabbed the hold of his arm. And Paul didn't, didn't call for anybody to help him. Paul had something inside of him to help him. He didn't call for any doctor. He didn't call for any nurse. He didn't call for anybody. Paul said, I got something on the inside that's going to work on the outside. And all Paul did was shake it off. You better learn how to start shaking some stuff off. They lied on you, shake it off. They talked about you, shake it off. The devil said you won't be anything, shake it off. Go to three people and just touch them on the shoulder and say, shake, 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 shake. 
Mm. You better shake that thing off. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 You better shake that thing off. God is getting ready to take you somewhere. God is getting ready to elevate you. God is getting ready to pull out on you. You better shake it off. The devil wants you to stay moon, doom, and gloom. The devil wants you to be between sadness and madness. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because in the house there is joy. In the house there is peace. In the house there is deliverance. In the house there is power. And I love the power from on high. Paul said, this woman, she's following us. And she got the wrong spirit. You got to know when folks are speaking, they got the wrong spirit. Woo! Oh my God. She was saying, she said, these are the men of God that show unto us the way of salvation. She was telling the truth. They were the men of God. They were preaching salvation. But she was saying in a mocking tone, making fun of them. And Paul said, that ain't the right spirit. If you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to be able to discern and say, that ain't the right spirit, and I will not receive it. When you tell me I ain't going nowhere, that ain't the right spirit. When you tell me I don't have nothing, that ain't the right spirit. When you tell me I'm not a child of God, that ain't the right spirit. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. I'm going to live for the Lord. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Hey. Ooh. I feel like preaching in this house. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Paul said, he cast the devil out of her. And the spirit immediately came out of that woman. And the magistrates had to deal with them. Because the men that prostituted her gift, the men that made gains on her gift, they were upset because he cast the devil out and she could not soothsay anymore. She could not tell fortunes anymore because the devil was casted out. I'm here to say if God really heals you and if God really saves you, you can't lie no more. You can't steal no more. You can't crook no more. You can't you can't fornicate no more. You can't commit adultery no more. You can't gamble no more. Or oh, I'm not getting too many amens now. If God really delivers you, you got to say like the old folks say, the Lord delivered me, why should I be bound? The Lord set me free, why should I be bound? Yeah! Uh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And here, when the gift was taken from her, they grabbed Paul, they grabbed Silas, and said, these are the men that mess things up. They lied on them. They said they being Jews. Now, why did they have to call them out? They can look at them and know they were Jews. You can look at me and know I'm a black man. You don't have to say him, the black man. Just look at me. But if you, if you got to call it out, that means there's something in you that you got to specify that I'm a black man. And they had to specify that they were Jews. And they called them out. But when you call folks out, God will bring you back in. When you call folk, God will bring you back in. Yes. How many of you that the devil have called out? He said you're not going to be anything. He said you won't amount to nothing. But God said, I'm calling you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Show forth the praises of him that brought you out from a mighty long way. Is there anybody here that God brought you out? 
Yes! 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 If you don't mind, but if you do mind, don't worry about it. But shake that neighbor's hand and say, just like God brought me out before, he'll bring you out again. Yes, he brought you out before, he'll bring you out again. But when he brings you out, you better run. When he brings you out, you better shout. When he brings you out, you better leap. When he brings you out, you better give him glory. When he brings you out, you better run. When he brings you out, you better shout. When he brings you out, you better praise him. When he brings you out, he brought me out. He brought me out. He brought me out. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh. Ooh. I feel the glory. Hey. I feel the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought me out and then he locked him up, put him in jail. Yes and said, these are Paul and Silas. Put them in the inner prison, locked them up in a dungeon, had the keys on him. Woo! But while they were there, they did something that most folks don't do. Other folks would have been complaining. Other folks would have said, we shouldn't be here. Other folks would have got the card table and say, let's play a hand of gin. Let's play some blackjack. Let's play spades. Other folks would have lit up a joint. Other folks would have poured a glass of wine, poured a glass of whiskey. But what's in a man comes out of the man. And while they were there, facing midnight, they began to sing a new song. When God lets you get in a troubled spot, go back in your mind, get a song, sing to the glory of God, get a song. And while they were singing, God heard the praise. I'm here to let you know, he won't hear the praise through your grumbling. He won't hear the praise through your complaining. He won't hear the praise through your mumbling, but he'll hear the praise when you sing the Lord's song. Sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Sing when you're down in the dumps. Sing when you don't know what to do. Sing. I dare you for 30 seconds, take a praise break and give God some glory now. Night, they sang praises under God, and the prisoners heard them. Somebody needs to hear your praise. Somebody needs to know your testimony. Somebody needs to know your mighty God. Somebody. Yes, come here, Timothy. Hey, tell somebody. Tell them I don't have time to tell you, but the Lord been good to me every day of my life. The Lord's been good. His mercy is everlasting. 
his truth endureth to all generations. Yes, the prisoners heard them. But not only did the prisoners hear, God heard them. God heard them. And when he heard the praise, he opened up the prison bars. He unloosed the latches in their feet. When God has you on his mind, he'll open your heart. If the devil has your chain, he'll open your hands. If the devil has you bound, he'll unloose your feet because he wants you to tell it. And you got to say, can't nobody tell it like I can tell it. Can't nobody tell it like I can tell it. Let me tell my story. Let me tell you how he healed me. Let me tell you how he delivered me. Let me tell you how he brought me out. Let me tell you how he made a way. Let me tell you how good God is. Good in the morning, good in the noonday, good in the evening, good at midnight. It's midnight, it's deadline, it's over. Satan, it's over. Satan, it's over. Satan, it's over. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Come on, praise him. Just run to this altar and give God a praise because you know the deadline has expired on your midnight. Hey! Deadline at midnight. Satan, your time is out for messing with my house. Your time is out for messing with my money. Your time is out.
Give God the glory. Give God the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Evangelist Sandy Atkins, get ready for numerous blessings. Get ready for numerous blessings. Woo! <laughs> my, 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 my. Ani, it's just beginning. It's just beginning. Woo. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel glory in this place. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. That's right. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. The Father seeketh such to worship him. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let God hear you through your mask. Some of you don't have on masks, but those of you that have on masks, you got to project it. Let God hear you through your mask. Your mask should protect your mouth, but it should not mask your praise. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, Jesus. 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 There could be someone in this building today that is not saved. That's in a backslidden state. 
you are now where we were. Because the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if you're unsaved now, if you're in a backslidden state, you are now where we once were. And the same God that brought me out can bring you out. God has shown you a portion of his power, his presence in this room. You cannot deny the spirit of the Lord. If you're in this room and you know you're not saved in a backslidden state, I want you to get up. Come to this altar. Please let me pray with you and pray for you. If you want to join the church, the doors of the church are open. We would love to have you here as a member of Temple of Deliverance. You will be tremendously blessed in this ministry. There's a special anointing on this house and a special anointing on this ministry. And when you come under this umbrella, that anointing trickles down, runs down the beard, the face of Aaron, the beard of Aaron, all the way to the skirts of his garment. You'll be blessed. That's why every church ought to want to see their pastor blessed. Every church. Because it runs down to the beard, the breastplate, to the skirts of his garment. And when the pastor is blessed, the house is blessed. I always want to pray that your pastor is blessed in every way, physically, financially, spiritually, mentally, in every way. Now you may bless, you may pray and ask the Lord to make me taller, he'll hear it, but I don't know if he's going to grant that one. He may not answer that prayer. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and then I'm going to appeal to our online audience, those of you that's watching. If you're not saved in a backslidden state, raise that hand and repeat with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for sparing my life. I'm alive because of you. I know that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins. And I am a sinner asking you to forgive me. I know that God raised you from the dead. Accept me now into the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer in sincerity, you're saved now. Info at todkojic.org. It's on your screen. Connect with us. And if you'd like to be a virtual member, let us know. We would love to have you as an online member here at Temple of Deliverance. 30 seconds left. We've shouted, we've rejoiced, we've praised God. But now it's time for you as a sinner, as a backslider, to say, I no longer want to live an ungodly life, an unchristian life. I want to be saved. Get up and come. You got 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. I want to join the church. Come on, 30 seconds. It's coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. Oh, it's a new season coming to me. Oh, help me say it's a new. It's a new season. Bless you, young man. It's That's a new right. day. It's a new Somebody else. 30 more seconds. Come on. Come on. Come on. Fresh anointing is coming my way. It's a season of power, season of power and prosperity. It's 
Come on, come on. It's coming my way, it's coming my way. Come on, come on. We got another 30 seconds. Come on. And prosperity. Oh, it's a new season. Coming, it's coming, it's coming. There are some folks up in the risers that the Lord is speaking to. I'm waiting on you. There's about three or four people in the risers that the Lord is speaking to. I'm waiting on you to come. I'm waiting on you to come down. You're on the edge of your seat. You know the Lord is pulling at you. I'm waiting on you to come down. Come on, come on. Where are those three or four that the Lord is speaking to? And you're sitting up in the risers. And your heart is telling you right now, the Lord is pulling at your heart. And say, so you need to go to that altar. Obey his voice. Don't put it off any longer. This could be saving your life. Here's one of the three that came down from the risers right here. Come on, there's somebody else. There's another two or three that the Lord is speaking to. I'm waiting on you. Thank you, Jesus. There's a season of power. There's a deadline on your midnight. Hallelujah. Here comes another from the risers. That's right. Come on. Come on. And there's at least one or two more sitting up in the risers that the Lord is speaking to. And I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. You are worth the wait. You are worth the wait. Here comes some more right now. God bless these young ladies. Here comes a young man from the riser. That's right. Come on. Come on. Here comes two more coming from the riser. That's right. Come on. The Lord will always confirm his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And it's coming to me. Hallelujah. Four or five came from the risers. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And yet, though millions have come, there's still room for one. Fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing. That's right, my brother. Come on, come on. The Lord is bidding thee to come. The bridegroom say, come. Whosoever will, let him come. He that thirsts, come and drink of the waters freely. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. We bind Satan now. We bind his power. We bind every hindering spirit. We bind the ugliness of the enemy right now. We plead the blood in this house. Here comes another soul. We plead the blood right now. The blood of Jesus make whole. The blood of Jesus restore. The blood of Jesus save. The blood of Jesus deliver. Break the yoke now. The yoke is destroyed by the anointing of the Lord. The yoke is destroyed by the anointing of the Lord. The yoke is destroyed by the pray, saints, pray. The yoke is destroyed by the anointing of the Lord. The yoke is destroyed by the anointing of the Lord. Come on out, Satan. Come on out, Satan. Come on out, Satan. Let the men go. Let the women go. Let the boys go. Let the girls go. Let the children go. Let our families go. Come on out, Satan. Come on out, Satan. Come on out, Satan. Come on out, Satan. You have no authority here. 
He break every fetter. He break every fetter. He break every fetter. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. You are a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Old habits, I bind you now. Every old habit, every demonic spirit, I bind you right now. Hey, I bind the power of the adversary. I bind the power of Satan. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Woo! Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the victory. 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 That's not just for them on the altar. That's for you where you are. Thank you for the victory. 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 This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Woo! Hallelujah! Hey! Hiya! Your children are getting saved. Your children are being delivered. Somebody ought to shout. Somebody ought to scream. These are your children. And just like God did it for them, he gonna do it for you. Thank you for the victory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. You better rejoice. My son is saved. My daughter is saved. My grandchildren are saved. You better start rejoicing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey. Woo. My nieces and nephews and cousins and brothers and sisters and in, they are saved because the deadline has expired. The expiration date has expired. Satan have had them long enough. The devil has had them long enough. It's over. That's right, Tashara, praise him. You've been through a lot, but your praise will bring you out. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Somebody that know God is good, just turn around one time and say, God is good. <laughs> hey, hey, my God today. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Well, I want to thank God. I believe a lot of these are joining the church today. And they got saved, but if you didn't join, you can go back to your seat. But I want to shake hands with all these new members today. Bless you, baby. Bless you, sir. They're going to tell you right to the right. Thank you, Jesus. You. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to give God some glory. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to show some signs. Thank you, Somebody ought to know God is at work Thank in your house. Thank Somebody you. ought to say God is good. God is great. And God is greatly to be praised.
Come on, Vanessa, give him some glory. Come on, give him some praise. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Elder Robinson, Sister Robinson, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. He's all right. He's my friend. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my weight maker. He's my joy. He's my strength. He's my peace. Can't nobody do you like give God another glorious praise in this house. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome God we serve. Well, you may be seated. What an awesome God we serve. Do anybody feel better today? I know I do. I feel better. The presence of the Lord has visited us once again. It's time to worship the Lord now in the ministry of giving. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Thank Need you, an Jesus. offering envelope. Deacons and ushers are on the floor to serve you. Please elevate your hand. And we'll be glad to serve you. That's right, that's right. <laughs> hey! Hey! Ay, 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 ay. My God. Woo! I feel another wave coming in here. Hey! <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to ask as many of you that will, let's plant a special seed today. God have broken this midnight for us. 
And I want you to plant a special seed of $35, $35, in addition to your normal tithe and offering, a $35 seed. I would that the whole house and those watching online would do it. And as you worship with us online, the platforms are on your screen now that you may give your tithe, your offering, any special seed that you want to plant in this ministry, platforms on the screen. We're asking everybody today for a $35 gift. If you cannot do the 35, do the next best gift that you can. But I certainly trust that nobody would give under a $20 gift. Yes, yes. All right, God bless you. God bless you. I know you're giving because God has honored you. God has honored you. And when you honor him, he'll honor you. Our announcements are going to come at this time. This health tip is brought to you by the Temple of Deliverance Health and Healing Ministry. This help tip is on ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is a growth of cells that forms in the ovaries. The cells multiply quickly and can invade and destroy healthy body tissue. When ovarian cancer first develops, it might not cause any noticeable symptoms. When symptoms happen, they're usually attributed to other more common conditions. Signs and symptoms may include abdominal bloating or swelling, quickly feeling full when eating, weight loss, discomforts in the pelvic area, fatigue, back pain, changes in bowel habits such as constipation, and frequent need to urinate. It is not clear what causes ovarian cancer, though doctors have identified risk factors such as older age and inherited gene changes, which is where a small percentage of ovarian cancers are caused by gene changes you inherit from your parents. Other risk factors are a family history of ovarian cancer from a blood relative, being overweight or obese, taking hormone replacement therapy, endometriosis, which is often painful disorder in which tissues similar to the tissues that line the inside of the uterus grow outside of the uterus, beginning your cycle at an early age or starting menopause at a later age or both and never having been pregnant. There is no sure way to prevent ovarian cancer, but there may be ways to reduce your risk. Make an appointment with your doctor if you have any signs and symptoms that worry you. Discuss the risk factors with your doctor, especially if you have a family history. For more information, please stop by the Health and Healing Room or see your health care provider. Good morning, Temple of Deliverance. These are your church announcements for Sunday, March 17, 2024. Calling all March Birth Month members. Please meet your Birth Month president at the West Side Greeter Station immediately following service. Evangelist Jeanette Elliott, President. Are you looking to serve in the TOD Youth Department? The Youth Usher Board would like to welcome you to serve along with them on the fourth Sunday of each month, which is our Youth in Action Sunday. The youth ushers will meet on Saturday, March 23rd, 2024 in the main worship center at 12 p.m. Hope to see you there. Sister Gwen Morris, Youth Usher President. The Word of God says children are a heritage from God. If you would like your child to sing with the Temple of Deliverance Children's Choir, rehearsal is Saturday, March 23rd, 2024 at 12 p.m. in the choir room of the main worship center. We also invite children who are gifted in playing musical instruments. We look forward to your child joining us as we glorify God in song. Sister Dolores Adelaide, Children's Choir Coordinator. The Sunday School Department invites you to come and support as they present a skit titled At the Cross on Easter Sunday at 8 a.m during the Sunday School Hour. Celebrate Holy Week with us. Palm Sunday, March 24th, and Resurrection Sunday, March 31st, right here in the sanctuary. More details to follow. 
Stay up to date by visiting the website www.todkojic.org. This concludes today's announcements. Have a blessed day. I mentioned that our member, Sister Sheila Price, mourns the passing of her brother, Ricky Rankin, and also the uncle to member, Sister Julie Kaiser. That funeral is Thursday, March 21st in Club Hills, Illinois. Please pray for that family. And our members, Brother Corey and Sister Latanja McKinney, mourn the passing of her father, Daniel Freeman, grandfather to uh, Hannah McKinney and Sister Leah McKinney Pipkin. That funeral will be Saturday at 11 a.m. 